first, we take you on our grand tour. Follow our Arts 21 reporters as they crisscross the country in 10 stages, from the Baltic Sea to the Alps. Our first stop features classical music on the Baltic coast. Everything is flat. There's nothing. Only landscape. Our reporter is heading to northeastern Germany, to the state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, to check out its annual classical music festival. Germany celebrates the World Cup, and instead we go to an old monastery, and we will listen to some percussion, to young percussionists. I wonder what kind of guys these are. His first port of call is Rune. Unusual sounds are awaiting him behind the walls of the old Benedictine monastery. Two Bavarian lads, Peter Fleckenstein and Kvirin Reichel, are getting geared up for their classical percussion concert. But how come these 16-year-olds are doing this when other teenage boys are caught up in World Cup fever? When I was a small child, I used to drum on everything. And that's how I ended up playing the drums. It's just four hours until the big event. Time for a bit of R&R. &R. <laughs> Peter's mother is on hand. Luckily, it's not fractured. As is Quirin's mom. They've driven the boys and their equipment over 800 kilometers from Bavaria. The drive itself is not stressful, but it is a bit stressful getting packed up. And it's also difficult when you're setting up and you discover that things are missing. We also have things like steel drums and car brake drums. Percussionists regard almost everything as an instrument. And then it's time to perform in Rune Monastery, an impressive display of talent. Relief all around. But how does new music like this go down around here? Our reporter Matthias Frickel asks around. Yeah, the main thing is that it's got bass, and that's definitely the case here. And that is in dem Fall ja absolut gegeben. I've been to lots of symphony concerts, but I've never experienced anything like this. It's amazing that such young people can play at such a high standard. I keep asking myself where they learned all that. Before the game is after the game. The guys did a nice concert, and we will move on to the Baltic Sea tomorrow morning. Just another 20 kilometers to the Dars Peninsula. Here, our reporter wants to see an English tenor and a South African pianist perform Heinrich Heine songs in an old seaman's church. He meets up with both of the musicians in Prero by the Baltic Sea. Mark sings German texts. I'm from the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I mean, what right do I have to play German literature from the 19th century. One of the songs is a, um, a Fischermädchen. Was it Fischermädchen? There's a Fischermädchen, yeah. 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 Um, Meerfrau. 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 There are a lot of references to the sea. Yeah. Zinken ins Meer hinein. It, it's, it's the idea of burying love and, and the songs yes. um, into the sea. Now that I listen to the sound of the sea, I get really curious to know what it sounds like if a South African and an Englishman sing German Heine songs in an old church at the Baltic Sea.
his ear is resounding with Highness songs, it's time for our reporter to travel back to Berlin. Two days of classical music in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. Now I know you can head north even if you don't look for the Baltic Sea. That was the start of our summer-long grand tour exploring Germany's cultural landscape. You can also keep up with the tour online.